Section 4.5, solving polynomial equations, is very similar, or it builds on section 4.4, where um, you know we should probably factor if we can, and then uh, we'll solve from there. So number one, we're going to start right with an example. Solve 2x to the third minus 12x squared plus 18x equals zero. So now, uh, in section four, uh, there was no equals zero part. It was just factor this. Well, now, uh, when we solve, the process really isn't any different than when we were um, factoring quadratics and solving quadratics. We're going to factor the polynomial that we have, 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 18x, and then we're going to set each factor equal to zero. So now, uh, instead of just two solutions like with quadratics, now we might have um, a few more. So, uh, this first one here, 2x cubed, 12x squared, 18x. Uh, 2, 12, and 18 are all divisible by 2, uh, and then they all have at least 1x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out uh, a 2x from each of them. That leaves me with x squared minus 6x plus 9 and that's going to be equal to zero, okay? So 2x, that's a monomial that can't be factored any farther, but this uh, x squared minus 6x plus 9, that can go down in, uh, a little farther, okay? So that is degree 2, so we can break this down a little farther. Uh, the 2x is going to stay out front. Let's see, x squared minus 6, x minus 9. We need two numbers that multiply together to get 9 and add together to get negative 6. Those two numbers, x, x, are going to be negative 3 and negative 3. Okay, so now we have a monomial, we have degree 1, we have degree 1. These are factored. Okay, so now what we can do is we can set each factor equal to 0. So we'll have x minus 3 equal to 0, whoops, equals 0, and then uh, we'll do the third one in blue, x minus 3 equals 0. So our solutions then, let's see, 2x equals 0, 2 times what number is 0? Well, that has to be 0. Uh, x minus 3 is equal to 0, so that means x is equal to 3, and then we just had that x minus 3 equals 0, so we have 3 again. So we have 0, 3, and 3, which brings me to um, the lone vocabulary term in the, solution, in the uh, section, and that is repeated solution. A repeated solution is simply a solution that appears more than once, okay? Um, obviously, we have an example of that. 3 is a repeated solution. It appears more than once. Okay? If a, if, I did, that shouldn't say graph. These shouldn't say graph. If a solution, if a solution appears more than once, sorry, an odd number of times. If a solution appears an odd number of times, whether that's one time or three times or five times or 11 times or 101 times, if a solution appears an odd number of times, the graph will cross the x-axis at that value, okay? If the solution appears an even number of times, so uh, here zero appeared an odd number of times, three appears an even number of times. I'm not looking at the actual value, I'm looking at the number of times that solution appears. And in this case, zero appears once, three appears twice. If a solution appears an even number of times, whether that's twice, 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, whatever, the graph bounces, and, and I put bounces in quotes because that's probably not the right term, uh, but that's kind of what makes sense to me. The graph bounces on the x-axis at that value. So what I, what, what I could do is if I wanted to, I could graph this uh, first equation. I know my solutions are 0 and 3, so uh, I, I make contact at 0, I make contact at 3. Now, uh, let's see, my original polynomial was odd degree positive leading coefficient, which means it would do something like this, okay? So I know that it's going to cross at zero because it appeared once. That's an even number of times, so that's going to do this. And then since it appeared an even number of times at three, three appears an even number of times, what that means is that it's going to hit the x-axis and turn back the other way. So you can kind of see what I mean by bounce. It, it comes across, hits it, and then comes back up. It's kind of like modeling a, a ball bouncing. It hits the ground and comes back up. So this is a bounce, this is a cross. It crosses at zero because zero appeared one time, an odd number of times. It bounces at three because uh, three appeared an even number of times. It appeared twice. Okay, so let's, let's try another one here. Find the zeros of the function, then sketch the graph of the function. So, whenever it says find the zeros, all that means is replace f of x with zero. So it's going to be zero equals negative 2x to the fourth plus 16x squared minus 32. The first thing you should always ask yourself is, are they all divisible by something? And when I mean they, I mean these. Are all of these terms divisible by something? They don't all have x's, but 2, 16, and 32 are all divisible by 2. And since the number in front of the biggest exponent is negative, I'm going to divide by negative 2. 
So negative 2 and take that out. Okay, so that leaves me with x to the fourth minus 8x squared. And then negative divided by negative is positive. 32 divided by 2 is 16. Okay, now uh, let's see what I see here. 4, 2, 0, that would be quadratic form. That would be method 4 from video 4.4, uh, from section 4.4. So what, the, what I can do then is I can go right to parentheses, treat it like a quadratic. But instead of x, it's now going to be x squared in both terms. Let's see, the negative 2 is still out front. Now, you need two numbers that multiply together to get 16 and add together to get negative 8. Those two numbers are negative 4 and negative 4. Okay, so negative 2 is a monomial. Can't be factored down any farther. x squared minus 4. Let's see, x squared degree 2, that's a square. 4 is also a square. What I have here is a difference of squares. So this can be broken down into x, let's see, square root of 4 is 2, so x plus 2 and x minus 2. And what I hope you notice is that, um, let me switch colors here, is that x squared minus 4, it's the same thing. It's going to break down again. x plus 2 times x minus 2. Still have the negative 2 out front, and this is still equal to 0. Everything's still here equal to 0. Okay, so now I've got monomial, degree 1, degree 1, degree 1, degree 1. I have factored as far as I can go. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to set each factor equal to 0. Well, let's see, negative 2 is just a number. There's no x here. It, negative 2 is not going to change. There's no way negative 2 could be 0. So really, at this point, I don't really need this negative 2 anymore because it's not going to help me solve the problem. Okay, so what I've got, I've got x plus 2. I've got x plus 2 twice. Okay, so I don't need to solve all of them if, they, if two of them are the same. So really, I can just set x plus 2 equal to 0. And then what I also notice is that I have x minus 2 twice. Okay, so then I could do x minus 2 equals 0. Okay, so when I solve these, I've got uh, x equals negative 2, and then this one will be positive 2, okay? And let's see, how many times would that appear? Well, this is going to be twice, okay, because I've got this one, and I've got this one. And then negative 2 is also going to be twice, because I have x plus 2 twice, okay? So my original uh, function, I had an even degree, which means my arrows, my ends go the same direction, and my leading coefficient was negative. So what that means is that my function is going to have that general shape, okay? Now, I know it crosses the x-axis at negative 2, or it touches the x-axis at negative 2 and positive 2. So what I can do, I can sketch my graph here. Here's negative 2, here's positive 2, and it, uh, both of them occur twice, which means they're going to bounce. Okay, so I know that my function looks like this. It's got that downward pointing arrows, and it bounces at each x value. So it's going to look like that. Then it's got to come around, and then it's got to bounce again at that other x value. So your, the sketch of your graph looks something like that. Could you be a little more specific, find out what that value is? Sure. Um, but it's, I don't think it's necessary because we're just being asked to sketch. If it actually said graph, then maybe we could be a little more specific. Um, but it, it, since it just says sketch, we're just looking for a rough picture. What I'm really focusing on is do you recognize that this appears twice, which translates to a bounce on the x-axis. If this appeared just once, then it would cross and it would go uh, upwards. Okay, let's try another one here. f of x equals x to the third plus x squared minus 6x. Again, what are they all divisible by? First of all, we're going to set it equal to 0. Whoops, let me go to the pen. 0 equals... Okay, what are they all divisible by? Well, I think they're all divisible by, it looks like it's just x. So we're going to have x, and then we'll have x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, uh, let's see. x out front is as far as it can go. That's a monomial, can't do anything with it. x squared plus x minus 6, that's a quadratic. Okay, so I'm going to focus this on in purple. So this is, let's see, x, x, two numbers that multiply together to get negative 6, add together to get positive 1. Uh, that would be, let's see, positive 3 and negative 2. The x comes with it out front, so it's 0 equals x times x plus 3 times x minus, minus 2. What I hope you notice here is that I'm not going to have any repeated solutions. All solutions here are going to be unique. So 0 equals, let's see, I don't really need to do that. Uh, right at this point, I can just set each factor 
equal to zero. Okay, so I'll have x equals zero. Well, that one's already done for me. That one's easy. x plus three equals zero, and x minus two equals zero. So uh, let's see, x minus zero, that one's already done. x plus three equals zero, which means x is equal to negative three. There's that one. And then x minus two equals zero implies that x is equal to two. Okay, so there are my three solutions. None of them repeat, which means they are all an odd number of times. One is an odd number. Okay, so when I sketch this graph, 0, negative 3, positive 2. Let's see, my original function was odd and positive, which means it's got this general shape. And it's going to look a lot like that, actually, what I just sketched. Um, all of these three points are going to have crosses. They're not going to bounce anywhere. So it's just going to have this general shape. We cross at negative 3, we cross at 0, and then we cross at 2. Does it go this low? Maybe. Could go lower, or could be a little higher, could be a little lower. Same with this side. We don't really know. It's, I'm not really focusing on can you go high enough or low enough. Um, that would be graphing calculator work, just typing in the function and getting the points. The real, the real uh, focus here is can you recognize if it's a repeated solution or not, and if it is or is not, what does that do to the graph? Does it cross? Does it bounce? Things like that. All right, so find all real zeros of the function. f of x equals x cubed minus 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. This one's a little different because none of the factoring methods in section 4.4 are going to work. Okay, yes, it has four terms, but this is not factorable by grouping. Okay, if we do the parentheses, it's not going to match. So what we need to do here is actually graph the function. And we're going to do that in the calculator. I'm not saying you have to do this by hand. Graph the function and use the calculator. The question you're asking yourself here is where does it cross the x-axis? Or where does it look like it crosses the x-axis? Where does it cross the x-axis? Okay. So when you do this, let me put a question mark there because that's really the question you're asking. Where does it cross the x-axis? What you're doing here, when you do this, uh, it looks like, or it will look like, it crosses the x-axis at negative 2, uh, positive 1, and positive 3. Okay? What we need to do is check them. We need to check. Be sure. Okay? How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that using synthetic division. Okay, so our x values, or our numbers in the, inside the L, these numbers here, whoops, these numbers here are going to be the coefficients of those. So we're going to have a 1, we're going to have negative 2, negative 5, and positive 6. Now, you can choose any of these three uh, numbers. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to choose negative 2 because that's the one I wrote first in red. So negative 2 goes there, and those are the x values. So if you're choosing an x value, that number goes there. Now, if this does cross the x-axis at negative 2, this number right here at the end should be 0. So if it's not 0, then this number is not correct, or we did something down here incorrect. Okay, so let's just go through this. We bring down the 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Negative 5 plus 8 is positive 3. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. And then we do get 0 at the end. Now... We could go back and test 1 with these numbers as well, but that would be the long way to do it, okay? What this tells us, what this line, this line right here tells me is that I know I have x plus 2 is a factor because, remember, this is always the opposite of that. And what this stuff tells me right here is that those are the coefficients 1 degree less. So if this was x cubed, now it's x squared. So 1, whoops, let me go back to the pen, 1x squared minus 4x plus 3. Okay, so that's what this tells me so far, is that when I use negative 2, I get a 0. That would be the factor, x plus 2, the opposite of the number. And then these numbers down here are the coefficients 1 degree less. So now I'm at this point where I could be closer to being factored. So we know that negative 2 works. Now let's try, let's try 1. We'll see if 1 works. And I'm not going to use these original numbers. I'm going to use these numbers down here. Okay, because, so then it's uh, fewer numbers to work with. And it's that way we can keep working this down even smaller. Okay, so we'll bring down the 1. So 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. Times 1 is negative 3. And then we do get 0 again. Okay, so what we've now got, we still had the x plus 2 out front because that's what we originally divided by. 
the one, that would be the value in the next parenthesis. And then what that leaves us is one more. So this was x cubed up here. Now it's x squared. When we come down again, now it is just x, and then x minus 3. So what we're doing here by testing these points, we're actually factoring down our polynomial uh, without having to use one of the special patterns or one, any of the factoring patterns from section 4. Okay, So we're left with x plus 2, and then we get x minus 1, and then the dividing tells us that x minus 3 is the last one. So if we were to set this equal to 0, we know that x is equal to negative 2. We did that one up here. We know that x is equal to 1. We did that right here. And now this one, x minus 3, that's another one-step equation. We're going to tell us, that's going to tell us that the x value, uh, the final x value is 3. And what do you know? Negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. Okay, those were our three answers. Negative 2, positive 1, and positive 3. Let's try another one here. g of x equals x to the third minus 28x minus 48. Again, uh, this does not work with a factoring pattern. There are no common factors. This is not a summer difference of squares or cubes. Uh, this is not quadratic form, and this is not um, factorable by grouping. There's not four terms. So what I would recommend doing, graph this in your calculator. Where does it look like it crossed the x-axis? It looks like... Uh, when you do graph this, it looks like it crosses the x-axis at negative 4, negative 2, and positive 6. Okay, so what we need to do then is we need to test negative 4, negative 2, and or 6. Okay, we'll probably need to test two of them, and then uh, what will happen is we'll be given the third one at the end. So just because I wrote negative 4 first, I'm going to use that one first. So negative 4, that's the x value. The numbers on the inside, let's see, 1, I don't have an x squared term, so that's got to be a 0, and then negative 28 for x, and then negative 48 for the constant, and let's go ahead and do the dividing. So bring down the 1, uh, let's see, 1 times negative 4 is negative 4, 0 plus negative 4 is negative 4, times negative 4, one more time, is 16, negative 28 plus 16 is negative 12, negative 12 times negative 4 is positive 48, and that's a great number because that does give us a 0 at the end. So what that tells me uh, is that I have x plus 4, and then let's see, this was x cubed, so when it comes down, it's now x squared minus 4x, let's see, minus 12 so far. Okay, so now let's go ahead and test negative 2. And again, I'm not going to use the same original numbers. I'm not going to use these because that's just kind of overkill. Uh, it's not going to help me work the, the, uh, the problem down any farther. It's just going to show me that once something works uh, as well. Okay, so let's go down, bring down the 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus negative 2 is negative 6. Times negative 2 is positive 12. Again, that's a great number because we do get 0 in the end. So what we've got then is we've got, uh, let's see, so originally it was x plus 4. That was what the negative 4 told us. The negative 2 now tells me x plus 2. Okay, and then what I'm left with, this down here is x not plus 6. It would be x minus 6 and this was all equal to zero. Okay, so my solutions, we already know it's negative four. We showed that earlier. We also showed x equals negative two. That's what we did in red. Now x minus six, that's just another single step equation. X is equal to positive six, and wouldn't you know, negative four, negative two, and positive six. So these are our solutions right here, negative four, negative two, and positive six. The last item of business in section 4.5 is actually going the other direction. So everything so far is I've given you or you've been given a function and you're supposed to find the zeros. Well, in this last couple of examples, I'm going to give you the zeros and you're going to tell me the function. Okay? So the directions say write a polynomial function f, so we're going to be using f of x, of least degree, meaning uh, we don't need, have any hidden zeros or any extra zeros that, uh, that they're not going to tell us, that has rational coefficients, a leading coefficient of 1, and the given zero. So the given zeros here are negative 4, negative 2, and positive 5. Okay, so what this tells us, this is kind of going back to this one. We know that uh, the zeros or the solutions are negative 4, negative 2, positive 6. And what did those give us? Well, negative 4 gave us x plus 4, negative 2 gave us x plus 2, and then positive 6 gave us x minus 6. We're going to do the very similar, something very similar to that uh, in this example, so f of x. So we know that the 0 is negative 4, so what that would tell us is that the factor is x plus 4. It's always the opposite, so that's where that one comes from. Uh, let's see, the negative 2, 
that's x plus 2, just the opposite of the number. And then the last one, positive 5, means x minus 5. Okay, that would be the factor. The reason it says a leading coefficient of 1, it means we don't need to put anything out in front of x. We don't have, we're not going to have anything uh, in front of our biggest exponent. It's just going to be a 1. It's going to make it really easy. Okay, so once we've got this set up where we have f of x because it says polynomial function f, um, we have our three factors because we had three zeros. All we need to do now is FOIL. We need to multiply these all together. Okay, so I'm going to start with the first two, x plus 4 times x plus 2. That would give me x squared. Let's see, x times x is x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 2 is 8. So that would be, let's see, x squared plus 6x plus 8. And then we're going to multiply that by x minus 5. Uh, let's see. So x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 5 is negative 5x squared. 6x times x is 6x squared. 6x times negative 5 is negative 30x. 8 times x is 8x. And 8 times negative 5 is negative 40. Then all I need to do here is combine like terms. So f of x is equal to, let's see, there's only one x cubed. So that's done. Uh, let's see, x squared. Negative 5 plus 6 is positive 1x squared. That takes care of those two. Negative 30 plus 8 is negative 22x. That takes care of those two. And then minus 40 on the end. So there is your answer, your function f that is least degree, meaning no, no smaller or no bigger than it has to be. Uh, rational coefficients, those are uh, no squ square roots of weird numbers, no imaginaries, nothing like that. Uh, leading coefficient of 1, which we've got, and the given zeros. If you were to factor this, x cubed plus x squared minus 22x minus 40, what you would find is that your solutions are negative 4, negative 2, and 5. Let's try one more here. Uh, let's see, slide this up. Negative 1, 8, and 9. Again, uh, use your function, f of x. The zeros tell you the opposite of the factor, so negative 1 would be x plus 1. Let's see, 8 would give us x minus 8, and 9 would be x minus 9. Now, you don't have to multiply the first two every time. You could do the second two if you want. You could do the first one and the third one. Uh, let's change it up a little bit. I'm going to do the second two together. So I'm still going to have x plus 1 out front. Let's see, x times x is x squared. x times negative 9 is negative 9x. Negative 8 times x is negative 8x. Negative 8 times negative 9 is positive 72. Let's see, combine those two. So I'll still have x plus 1 out front. x squared, let's see, minus 17x plus 72. And we're going to multiply one more time. Let's see, x times x squared is x cubed. x times negative 17x is negative 17x squared. x times 72 is 72x. 1 times x squared is x squared, 1 times negative 17x is negative 17x, and 1 times 72 is 72. So let's combine our like terms. Let's see, there's only one x cubed, so we're going to have f of x is equal to x cubed. That takes care of that one. x squared, so i got negative 17 plus 1 is negative 16x squared. That takes care of those. 72x minus 17x is uh, 55x. 55x takes care of those and then lastly plus 72 so this right here is your final answer for number two